Well, good evening and uh, welcome to our evening prayer. Uh, just about two minutes before uh, I began this evening, I realized that I did not post the bulletin on Facebook. Um, I apologize for that. I've been uh, purposely remembering well, uh, but sometimes with the delay and all the different files that are being uploaded, uh, I, for the first time, have had a moment where I completely forgot. Um, so you will be listening to um, evening prayer tonight, and uh, I'll be adjusting it a little bit along the way. Uh, it'll be a little bit shorter, and um, you'll just be able to respond by listening to the words that I am sharing. Um, since it was shared on Facebook just a little bit ago, I wanted to ask the community to keep uh, Pastor David Mumford in your prayers and Mary. Um, we were notified that Pastor Mumford is in the hospital in Florida currently uh, with a blood infection. And um, so it's not virus related for COVID, but it is with um, the blood and an infection. Uh, so please keep Pastor David Mumford in your prayers and Mary. And uh, we as a congregation will be sharing uh, any updates that we know about along the way. Uh, for this Sunday will be uh, the day of Pentecost, and we'll be hearing uh, beautiful lessons. Our, one of our lessons for tonight will be from Acts chapter 2, and it is a lesson that we will be hearing uh, coming up on Sunday. I'll be speaking a little bit about Pentecost and in preparation for our Sunday worship. Again, I do apologize for not having the bulletin up for you to follow and to respond. So you'll be merely listening tonight, and I'll be sure that that mistake will not happen uh, ever again. We begin our evening worship. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we have come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praise, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the 19th chapter, the book of Exodus. On the third new moon after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you out to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, some of the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud in order that the people may hear when I speak with you, and so trust you ever after. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading comes, our second lesson comes from the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, and they were all gathered with one another in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
For those tongues were divided, as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were very devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and were, and were bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our lesson from Acts, which was just read, it tells the story of the outpouring of the Spirit on the day of, of Pentecost and the response of the people who witnessed. And the response was not one of calm or rational understanding. But rather, they were bewildered, amazed and astonished and perplexed. We will hear again this lesson this upcoming Sunday. This event, which I would consider a real act of God, was beyond their ability to comprehend or explain. It left them in a state of great confusion. As the lesson puts it, all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Most of us don't like it when we can't understand something. We feel very uncomfortable with confusion and change. And so someone may be receiving this story a little skeptically, but also one of reassurance as Peter goes on to precisely attempt to explain this event. And you may also insist that the miracle of Pentecost was the language of the apostles. It was fully understood to the people of many different languages. But I wonder if part of our problem with our lives of faith is that we insist on keeping God firmly within a box of what it is that we can understand and explain and leave very little room for mystery, for the deep spiritual mystery of awe and wonderment. But none of our attempts, as this rational explanation thus far, can change the fact that the event of Pentecost itself is something that is astonishing. And so it seems to me that one of the lessons of Pentecost is that when God happens, it will be astonishing. If we want to see some genuine acts of God in our midst, we need to be prepared for times of amazement and even some confusion. And if we want our faith to be something lived, if we want this church of Luther Memorial to be alive with the power of the Spirit, we have to expect that it will only happen to the extent that God of Pentecost comes to us and shakes things up and blows us around. The Holy Spirit, as comforter, eases our distresses and encourages us, and it comes to us in times of trouble. And it's just that kind of comfort that we have all been seeking, that I imagine that is at the heart of Jesus' conversation with the disciples in the fourth gospel, that of John. But in our lesson from Acts tonight, there is nothing particularly comforting about a rush of violent wind, let alone descending of tongues of flames. And once the disciples take this new multilingual ability into the streets of Jerusalem, pretty much everyone who witnesses their activity is described as bewildered and amazed and astonished. Again, the Spirit didn't comfort anyone, but instead prompted those disciples to make a very public scene with this troubling good news that this person that the crowds had put to death was now alive through the power of God. 
The Holy Spirit is as much an agitator as an advocate, as much one who provokes as one who comforts. The Greek word paraclete is a compound of the Greek word that literally means to come alongside someone else or another. And so in this sense, the paraclete can be an advocate to come alongside, to defend and counsel, or a comforter to come alongside and to comfort and encourage. But the one who comes, comes alongside might also do so to strengthen us for work or to muster us to have good courage or to prompt us or to even provoke us into an action that we resist. Which is why I think the paraclete is one who comes alongside us to encourage us and to equip us for the task of ministry is such a perfect name for the Holy Spirit. So perhaps on this upcoming Pentecost Sunday, we might substitute the traditional prayer, Come Holy Spirit, with one that may be more suited to the name that we've discussed. Come alongside us, O Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we hear the song of Mary for our evening prayer, Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 55, some of the most beautiful words of Scripture. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We now join together and share the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I share these prayers as the prayer of this evening. Almighty God, on this day you have opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us for... The evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. We now in community offer those prayers that are deep within our heart as we are mindful of the many names that are on our prayer list at Luth Moral Church. I also offer... Uh, as I shared at the beginning of our evening prayer, we pray especially this evening for Pastor David Mumford as he is in the hospital in Florida with a blood infection. And uh, we also offer those prayers in this moment of silence that are deep within your hearts as you name them on your lips. Amen. 
And before I offer the closing prayer of Thanksgiving, um, gathered in the chapel during now the warmer season, the air conditioning has turned on, and uh, you should be noticing the candles uh, moving much more rapidly uh, than when we began. And it's a sign once again of that uh, spirit, the movement of air, and uh, the way that the Lord works and pushes us and agitates as well as brings us comfort. This is our closing prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, for our, our preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking with you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all the ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And may the God of hope fill us tonight with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you again for joining us in evening prayer. I do apologize for not having the bulletin, but I do hope that you were able to hear the words as we give thanks for this evening, for the blessing of our shared ministry, and the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen.